pet portrait, I begin with a sketch. In this particular case, this dog is a uh, more or less a neutral color as its base, a kind of a, a light sienna color. So I mix some sienna with some white and a little touch of raw umber just so that it wasn't too bright and just began my sketch. Now many people in this particular situation, they will tr attempt to use projectors or any method to get all the proportions thrown up there on the canvas. Um, but I think for anybody that really wants to learn how to paint, it's a great idea to uh, sketch and learn to sketch from photos. So in this particular case, somebody supplied me with a photo that they wanted to, that they really felt was a good one, and I'm going to go right from the photo. So at this point, I'm just blocking in some color that is darker than, somewhat darker than, I would say, the most neutral color. That way, when I go over the top of it with, with uh, secondary colors and highlights, everything's going to show up really well. So as you can see, the, the sketch is coming together. I'm, I've got my color, a lot of the color blocked in, still that same umber color, a uh, little darker in areas, more uh, raw umber where you can see it's darker along underneath the chin and along the ears. And the face in this particular case is lighter in color. And there's some hints of sienna uh, in the face, but it's not a real reddish color. It's more of a mix of um, yellow. So what I did is I combined burnt sienna with um, Naples yellow to come up with the basic color. So here is where I've I've come in and I'm putting the underside of the jaw which I probably should have waited on that. I end up adjusting that at a later date um, uh, further into the painting. But uh, now I'm just using some of the lighter tones. I'm mixing more white in with the umbers uh, just to do some sketches, but you never want to use pure white. There's very few even dogs who would appear to be white that are actually completely white. So as the sketch comes together, I, I tend to get a little bored doing the fur in the beginning. And what inspires me is to start doing some of the details. So very shortly, uh, you'll see me get into start painting the eyes and the detail in the nose. And as that improves and start to look more and more like the photo, I will go back to the fur. But for now, I'm just blocking in color. And what I'm doing is I'm using a sweeping motion with a loose bristle, bristle stiff brush. And I'm basically stroking the canvas the same direction of the fur in the, in the photograph. So if the fur sweeps under the eye and, and then circles up over the cheek, I follow those same patterns with my, with my brush strokes. So now, as you can tell, I'm basically blocking in the nose, which, <laughs> interestingly enough, the, the, this will change a little bit as this painting goes on. I move the nostrils, actually, I end up moving them down a little bit, which you'll see later on. But So I'm trying to get myself excited about the portrait by painting in some of the details, and now as, as having coming off the nose, which was a combination of Payne's gray and some white and a little raw umber, now I'm moving on to the eye, and I'm just looking very closely at the photograph as to what colors are in there. So you want to really look close. A lot of people think, well, he's got yellow eyes. Well, no, there's a lot more to it than that. So I started with more of a sienna color around the profile of the eye, and in the middle there, I mix a little bit more Naples yellow with it. And I put in these little marbling effects. Um, and then now I'm putting in over the top of that, I've got some of the white highlights. But that's even grayed down a little bit. And then once those dry, I'll put in little dots of white, which makes it look more real. But the key with, any, with, with painting a dog portrait is painting exactly what you see in the photo. You have to look really close. A lot of people ignore the details. You have to get in and look tight. Even also above the pupil, you'll notice it's a little blue. Well, it's picking up some reflection from the sky. This photo happened to be taken outdoors, even though I'm doing it on a black background. Uh, you're going to see some of the sky um, reflected above the pupil. So, as you can see, the eyes turned out pretty well, and I'm back to the fur again, doing strokes that follow the, the fur pattern of the dog, and that's the key. And...
Choosing a color is going to take a lot of practice. You always want to build up. You don't want to start putting your highlight colors on right away until you have a, a nice variety of tones that represents the neutral colors of the animal. So there's some areas that are a little redder than others on the dog, like this, but and over the right eye, you're going to see more of those colors, so I'm putting more of that in there. But if you'll notice, my strokes are still going the direction um, of the fur, which I'm not showing you the photo at the, at the moment, but um, that's what I focus on doing. So now I'm just filling in and just making sure I got the canvas covered with a variety of tones that represent the the color of the animal. So it's a, this is a cute dog. It's got uh, some white highlights on the face, which you'll see later. Some uh, some sienna tones, some kind of a yellow gray, and uh, and uh, just so I'm just making sure I got the base covered, and it just makes it that much more interesting when you come back over the top with your highlights. So here you here I'm just adding a little more color, slowly building my way up. And if you're going to do dogs, it actually, I think it's easier for people that are new to it to wait for some of these layers to dry so that your, your paint sticks a little better when you go over the top of it. If you're going to work a la prima or wet on wet, you're going to have to be really thin with your lower layers. And then as you work your way to your highlights, it has to become, uh, they get thicker and thicker in order to show up. But you can, it's real easy to create a muddy mess if you don't know what you're doing. So here I'm blocking in the tongue, which is a combination of a magenta and white. And, I'm actually, and, and you can see the shadowed areas. I'm mixing a little bit of Payne's gray in there, which gives it a darker shadowed tone. But I'm just beginning that color, just to get the basic shape. And I've laid in some representations of the teeth. Now the outline of the mouth, which at this point doesn't look very good. It's going to change, but I'm just trying to get some basic shapes in there so that I, got, I have something to work with. Remember, when you're working in oils, or uh, actually acrylics even for that matter, you can always go back over the top. So you'll see that I do. So I'm starting to darken it, the shadows underneath the, the upper lip of the dog on the tongue. I wasn't dark enough, so I'm, I'm continuing to add a little bit more, and I'll add a little extra paints gray until I get the color I want. And let's see, now I'm cutting in the teeth, which all I did was just paint a stroke of the kind of an off-white, a white and Naples yellow color for the teeth because no dog has perfectly white teeth. And then I, then I go in and I outline them, cut in and outline them with a fine brush in the Payne's Gray to show the outlines of the teeth. And so now is where I'm coming back in, dropping in some more highlights in the eyeballs, some more fur. Now the fur is getting a little bit lighter now. And you can see that I'm doing strokes that... Um, are going sp very specific directions which emulate what I found in the photo. So I'll drop, so now I've got, uh, I'm, I'm working my way up the one side of the face and there's even going to be more highlights beyond this but this even, these areas are really obvious on the dog's face that the face is, has some sienna showing through but the bulk of it is really fairly light and so now I'm switching back to just doing some detail. I like to move around just to keep myself interested. So now I'm back to putting some highlights on the lip, which is nothing but a toned down version of uh, the Payne's Gray with a touch of the lizard and crimson, just to get it so that it looks a little bit more purple. Because these no, no dog's lips are perfectly black. Um, and the, the lizard and crimson along with the Payne's Gray is a great way to do that. So. I'm just continuing to lighten and add strokes, and I use I make sure that I'm using a brush that's got stiff bristles that aren't real tight, so that they, so that a nice sweep motion will actually leave some feathering looking hairs as you lift the uh, the the uh, brush off the canvas. So now I'm adding to the most highlighted site. The light source is actually coming from the left to right, and you can see that I'm dropping in a little bit lighter tones on this side of the face. And the face is starting to take shape as you can see, but it's really important that your brush strokes follow the pattern that you see in the photo. Uh, if, you, if, the, if all that lighter colors were added and were not done at the correct flow, 
if they were it, it wouldn't look like the same dog so it's really important to pay attention to those details um, this is actually a good one to get started on for people just getting started so now I've got more of a sienna color mixed with Naples yellow that gives me that kind of light pale reddish yellow uh, and I've got certain portions of the year which have that and then I'm going to go back in and I'll be putting in some whiter fur as it feathers in toward the center of the ear right here which that's just kind of blocked in and then I'll go back with a fine brush and add just some details just to suggest that these hairs are quite a bit finer so now I'm adding some uh, final touches on the fur um, a lot of the colors used for the fur were done in in smoother strokes that grouped the hairs together you don't want to paint every hair but in where the hairs begin and end you can you can put in some of that detail just to suggest that there is a lot of individual hairs there um, but if you try to paint every hair it's just not going to happen you want to use a single brush stroke to cover a lot of ground on this or you'll be there uh, painting fur forever but um, so now I'm coming back in and adding some of the darker tones where I feel like I need them in order to get some of the highlights and secondary values to show up. Uh, just some basic touch-ups. Highlights are on the edges of the ear, uh, which that can be that can be uh, smoothed out and cut in later. And here I'm. Here's a little bit more of that uh, raw umber being used to to drop in some shadows and behind. Uh, the uh, highlights that way everything shows up it's really important I, I, I need to make a note of this it's when you are painting the highlights on the fur a lot of you know people might think well you want that to have nice tapered ends as you feather it out but in reality it looks much more real if it also feathers in the other direction as well in other words the final highlights should fade in both directions for them to look real. Um, it's kind of hard to describe what I'm talking about, but when you are uh, applying your brush strokes for the final highlights, yeah, I basically you want it to feather in both directions. So as you can see, this is coming together. I am just making some final touches, uh, adding the, uh, the very light colors around the lower lip, and uh, lighter colors along the left side or our, or the dog's right side of its face with the light source coming in from the left hand side and um, adding some fur in the more shadowed areas so when you have your shadows your shadows areas which actually show fur as well you got to make sure that it looks as though it's toned down because that is it's not getting the direct light that that the opposite side of the the dog's face is getting but you can always go back particularly when you're working with oils and you can smooth them out I'll come through with my finger and and dull down any highlights that I feel are uh, or tones that I feel are just too pronounced and then you can always go back and add more later if you if you wish so now I'm going to starting on the collar of the dog which is just a combination of magenta and white or you can use alizarin crimson um, the idea is to get it's the color was a pink color so I just basically replicated that and just faded it into the fur on both sides and it's just it just suggests that the that the collar disappears underneath the fur Eh, some final touches. Um, now I'm going to putting some detail into the little ring that holds all of the tags and some final highlights on the nose and the lower lip. That's just those little extra little sparkles is what makes this really jump. So now I'm doing the fur that is under the jaw of the, of the uh, animal. And if you'll notice, I don't put as much detail as this, as the painting fades out toward the per perimeter, 
I don't put as much detail. I like to keep the focal point, which would be the directly dead center on the face, as being the most detailed. Out here, it, it just kind of fades out. I may cut in with some raw umber just to, just to uh, generate some uh, value differences, some suggestions of highlights. And, uh, but I don't put a lot of detail in there. And it kind of has an interesting effect. It makes it look as though it's kind of fading out as it goes away from you and goes out of focus. So here's where I'm just simply painting what I see in the photo. The dog has some collar tags, <coughs> some collar tags, and um, I'm just trying to match the colors that those tags are. One of them is yellow, one of them is like a dark charcoal color, and the other one is like a silvery color. And it's just, this is about just painting what you see, folks. That's all you got to do. And then, of course, it casts a little shadow on the dog's fur, so I drop in some more of that raw umber right behind it. And then I just continue around until I feel like I'm getting a little closer to a finished product. And some final lighter highlights. If The, the more detail you do add to these areas, uh, the more realistic it looks. Well, that concludes another painting, folks, and I want to thank you again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and uh, I hope you also enjoyed the narration. I'm trying to offer some assistance for those that do want to improve their own painting skills, um, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed painting it. This uh, painting is for Jeff and Robin, and uh, I am sorry for your loss, but I bring you Super Foxy Lady. That's her name. And uh, so tune in next time, and don't forget to uh, come visit me on the Wickheiser Studios Facebook page or to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.